If you've ever played on a gaming PC in a small room, you know that electronics spit out a ton of heat. But what if it wasn't going to waste and you could actually use it to heat the rest of your house? Sounds like a great idea, especially with how high heating bills have gotten in many parts of the world. It turns out there are places that do this on a large scale. So forget about sticking your computer in your bedroom and just running Furmark on a cold night. I'm talking about huge data centers, which generate so much waste heat that they can heat thousands of homes. Although projects like this can be found worldwide, they're perhaps most common in Northern Europe, which makes sense as Scandinavia isn't exactly known for warm beaches. Good people though. The general way this works is that cold water is pumped into data centers to cool the air surrounding the server racks. This can be done in several ways, but it's common to see hot air from the servers forced through the chilled water with a fan. As a result, the water warms up and leaves the facility, but instead of it going to some sewer somewhere, it goes to the city's heating grid. In parts of Scandinavia, homes are heated with water-filled radiators, meaning that this warm water can just be pumped directly into them from the central system and returned to the grid afterward to be heated up again. In fact, because data centers generate so much waste heat, the EU is considering bringing in a regulation that would require excess heat recovery from data centers that use more than one megawatt of power. It remains to be seen whether this will indeed end up being a Europe-wide requirement, but countries are already using other means to get the companies that run data centers to do something worthwhile with their waste heat. And we'll tell you what those are right after we thank Nexigo for sponsoring this video. If you're working from home and need a webcam, Nexigo has a wide variety to choose from to keep you looking sharp on conference calls. Whether you're on a budget and need a high quality video, or you want the best possible webcam regardless of price or something in between, their selection of webcams and webcam accessories accessories will help you look and sound your best. Take your webcam setup to the next level and get a Nexco webcam using the link below. As is the case with most projects involving a business doing something for the common good, waste heat reclamation isn't something corporations are doing solely out of the kindness of their hearts. For example, data centers in Stockholm get compensated for the waste heat they sell and the local energy provider actually gives them chilled water to cool things off with in the first place. Meanwhile, in Denmark, the government has gotten rid of a pre-existing tax on data centers that generate excessive amounts of heat to incentivize them to instead make a lot of heat and then distribute that waste heat back to the grid. And in Germany, a law is already in place that requires a full 40% of waste heat to be reused for data centers that open in 2027 or later. But exactly how impactful will these programs and requirements be? Well, there are some pros and cons to heating actual homes this way. You need the right infrastructure to support an actual heating grid, which would be alongside your other things like municipal electrical grids. Additionally, the waste heat that comes out of the data centers usually isn't all that hot. Sometimes it's as low as 80 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that more energy sometimes needs to be added to get it up to the temperature needed for heating buildings. And even then, it still may not be warm enough to heat anything other than homes. That being said, the actual number of homes this technology could benefit is significant. You can actually heat around 20,000 average apartments with only 10 megawatts of power. To put this into more concrete terms, one single data park in Stockholm expects to be able to heat one-tenth of the entire city of Stockholm by 2035. And although Northern Europe seems to be leading the way in this trend, we're seeing similar projects in the US, Canada, France, the UK, and Switzerland. So as our reliance on cloud computing and AI grows, more and more people may find it easier and cheaper than ever to stay warm in winter. Though that doesn't really say much about the other consequences we might face. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit us up in the comments section with your suggestions for topics that we should cover in the future.